Hey folks, I've got my hands on a state-of-the-art 10,000 pound Celestron C14 HD Edge telescope. And tonight, from my roof in London, I want to use it to see clouds on Mars. That is 50 million miles away. A weird shadow on the moon. What the heck is that? Ganymede, the biggest moon in the solar system. And Mars setting behind the moon. The music for this Astro Biscuit mission is brought to you by His Majesty King Richtenstein. Details of all the Astro gear used in this video on my website, link below. You can support the channel by making a donation, becoming a patron, or by one of our high quality prints. Don't faint, but London is calm, it's clear, perfect for looking deep into space. The Celestron C14 HD Edge weighs 26 kilograms and I can't afford to drop it because it ain't mine. Two weeks ago, I hired it from amateur astronomer Alex Gill. Hi, buddy. Oh, <laughs> oh look at that. How much is that in you? Just shy of 10,000. Most of the weight is at the back end where the giant 14 inch spherical oh. mirror sits. Oh. Very, very back heavy. The mirror is weighty. The fatter a telescope, the greater its resolution. And this short fat scope is basically the fattest scope a nerd can pick up single-handed. It's just about okay, isn't it? So it's no surprise, this is the go-to telescope for groundbreaking planetary photographers like Damien Peach. It's Damien Peach! <laughs> but I think the real reason these SCTs are popular is because the adverts make us nerds think we're gonna get 20 years younger and grow beautiful hair. Whatever the truth, I definitely feel younger. Like a kid, in fact, with a big toy that's going to transport us many millions of miles above my roof in London. I don't know whether my heart is beating because I'm worried that she's going to drop on the floor or whether there's a real sense of anticipation. And I've just seen the moon rising over there. Ooh. Bring it on. The moon is about a quarter of a million miles away. It takes three days to get there in a spacecraft. If we went there at the speed of a passenger jet, then it would take us 16 days. Even though the moon is so incredibly far away, this giant telescope is able to resolve things on it as small as a mile wide. <sighs> it's like we're flying over the moon. Wow, and that means I'm gonna be able to show you some really cool stuff. Oh, look, you see that crater? It's got a sort of a mountain in the middle. And, and that little one has, and that big one has there. I've heard about these mountains. They form at the same time as the crater's rim. That's because when the asteroid smashes into the moon, it actually liquefies the surface of the moon and you get like a ripple spreading out, just like you do, well, in a cup of tea, right? It's easy to see how the ripple can become the crater's rim. But check out what's happening in the middle. In the middle, you get splashback. And when the crust freezes, it freezes as the ripples spread it out and as the splashback in the middle is lifted up. So you get this mountain in the middle. It's mad, isn't it? In the 50s, the old guard believed these craters were caused by volcanoes the mad fools. And yet there is a volcano on the moon. There's probably more than one actually, but the one I know of is on the left of the moon. Let's have a look at it. It is only about a thousand meters high. So I need a scope like this to get a decent view of it. This is something I've been wanting to see for ages. Oh yeah, clear as anything. Look at that. That is Mons Runka. Probably said it totally wrong. It's kind of like a cow pad. I mean, you've got to admit, it's not a classic volcano shape, is it? And the reason it's not volcano shaped is because the gravity on the moon is so weak that the lava gets to spread out over a wide area. Then I spotted a crater with a straight line running to its center. What is going on with that? We've got the mountain in the middle and we've got, well, it looks like the shadow from a telegraph pole. What the heck is that? Whatever it is, it's massive because the mountain range in the middle of this crater is the size of London. So I took a video and used lucky imaging techniques to produce a high resolution picture. And I think we can now say it is in fact a collapsed lava tube. 
these hollow lava tubes crisscross the entire moon's surface. And if I was one of the astronauts who's going to go and live on the moon, then I would definitely plug one of these tubes up, fill it with air, so that I could play golf without having a helmet ruin my swing. We are now ready for what I think is going to be the highlight of tonight. Mars is closer now than she will be for the next 10 years. She's risen high in the sky. Come on, let's do Mars. Wow. Wow, I mean, look at that. That planet is 50 million miles away. And we can see it like that from a roof in London, which is just blows my pants off, basically. If there was ever a planet to make you realize that we are on a lump of rock just the same, is this one because you can see the polar cap and clouds. You can see what looks like landmass. Actually, it's rock, the dark bits are rock, and the, the orange bits are, are sand, it's desert, Martian dust. Five years ago, Mars was even closer. But back then, even Hubble didn't get a good shot of it because it was covered in a huge dust storm. So I'm hoping tonight, me and this giant scope will do a better job than Hubble. Definitely my best shot of Mars ever. That has absolutely made my day or night. But the night is not over. At 4 a.m. in the morning, I very quietly went back out onto the roof. All right. Because Mars, which is now low on the horizon and minding its own business, is about to get photobombed by the moon. I doubt I'll ever see a sight like this again in my lifetime. All right. There's quite a lot of atmospheric wobble right now, so I'm not gonna try and go too zoomed in. Oh man, the wind. The wind, stop, no. Despite my little mount not being able to handle the C-14 in the slightest breeze, we still got this terrific view. It's the kind of view you think you'd only be able to see from a spaceship and most Londoners won't even know it happened at all. Of course, it would be rude not to use lucky imaging techniques to get a much higher resolution picture. What an amazing night. But not the only night. I also went out and I got Jupiter and I was lucky enough to see the biggest moon in our solar system, Ganymede, rising up from behind it. And about four hours later, the red spot made an appearance, but the atmosphere is very wobbly. You can see how the wobbly atmosphere is sort of blurring everything up here. But it's not just planets in our solar system that I've bagged with this scope. In an upcoming video, I'm on a mission to shoot extra solar solar systems, right? Can we do it? Look at that. This would be amazing if we do, because us nerds shoot loads of shots of nebula and stuff, and you've got no real sense of how big they are compared with us and our solar system. You know? But if I can shoot an extra solar solar system, it'll give me a sense of the scale of the universe. And I've got another incredible mission planned. More on that later. But first, if you're thinking about buying a telescope, why not check out my website? I have actually done a video uh, talking about telescopes and the STT came out as the best all-round telescope. So check out my video and check out my website and please use my affiliate links because that way I can make more videos. As always, massive shout out to Richtenstein for the music. You can buy his album, link below. Phenomenally massive shout out to my patrons. Without you guys, I absolutely, completely could not do this. Thank you guys. Huge shout also to the mods on my Discord server. Guys, you are the best, incredible. And if you wanna find out and ask questions and get answers straight away, the Astro Biscuit Discord server is the place to be. 
Big news. Big news. In my last video, uh, where we built a scope called Betty, uh, and I dropped it. I put out a fundraiser to get me and Betty to the Canaries. You guys have absolutely, totally and completely smashed it. And now me, Betty, Kerry, Richtenstein, and, and, and Bunny are all going to the Canaries on October the 5th, I think. We'll hopefully book the flights today. Uh, we're gonna spend a week out there, then I'm gonna stay on for an extra week. Should be amazing. Make sure you watch the Making of Betty video, which I'll link to now, uh, because that'll prime you ready for this Canary Island extravaganza. Whew. Exciting times, folks. Exciting times.